Chris, yeah, Chris, from all over Come together and start to build up We can do something for you Raise your eyes, improve your function Put your life in the hands of the ones Who can really help you Take the first step and don't delay Physical and rehabilitation medicine And the future starts today Aspirant thing uh, means to me. I mean, um, aspirant means a lot to me, and I think it should mean a lot to all uh, Piram physician, because uh, aspirant is the word vice Piram physician to the WHO. It's the only way we can actually make the difference um, um, in uh, strengthening rehabilitation in the health systems worldwide. Uh, I come from a country where rehabilitation um, it's uh, in a good in a good situation uh, as uh, Italy is prob probably one of the countries where rehabilitation is developed most uh, even though we are still facing some issue as uh, not all uh, the people that uh, need rehabilitation can actually access it and uh, so I think that it is very important that every Piram physician is uh, registered uh, to his own uh, national uh, society of physical rehabilitation medicine. And then uh, uh, it is important that these societies uh, are gathered together within uh, an umbrella society that in this case is the International Society of Physical and Rehabilitation Medicine, the ISPRAM. Uh, the ISPRAM means also to me the possibility uh, to meet a different Congress, um, incredible people, incredible people that uh, make the difference um, in physical rehabilitation medicine from all over the world. ISPRAM Congresses uh, uh, are very important because uh, they are a place where you can meet incredible people that change the history of physical and rehabilitation medicine and that um, in, um, in increase and advance the knowledge in physical and rehabilitation medicine. I started attending uh, the meetings of the ISPRAM since uh, the second ISPRAM meeting in Prague and, um, and I was a resident student at that time and everything looked so gorgeous to me. I mean, um, uh, listening to well-famous uh, international lecturers, um, having the chance uh, to, uh, to speak uh, and uh, network with them uh, at the opening ceremony or at the networking event uh, and um, make a toast with them and speak about uh, physical rehabilitation medicine, how we can advance physical rehabilitation medicine in each country, to confront myself uh, with, uh, with other physicians uh, who were facing different challenges uh, in their country and uh, to uh, uh, accept their suggestion uh, and uh, give suggestions uh, on um, on uh, how to face this challenge, each challenge, and um, Aspiram is a very is a society that it's open to everyone, 
I, I actually invite um, any member of the ISPRM, but above all, uh, all young members of the ISPRM to try to get the, to be more involved in the society. Because ISPRM needs uh, any of us. Uh, we need people working in the different ISPRM groups, the committees, the task forces, uh, and the special interest groups. We need people uh, with ideas, we need people presenting outstanding papers um, at the different congress. Um, we need um, uh, all, uh, all the PRM physicians, all medical students uh, that are interested in PRM uh, to make sure that, opera, that uh, physical rehabilitation medicine can be advanced uh, all over the world. This year it marks uh, the 25th anniversary of the ISPRM. I think that the evolution of ISPRM since uh, 1999 is, uh, it's, uh, it has been tremendous uh, and uh, I just want to wish ISPRM a happy birthday. It has been a great honor to become the president and to being elected uh, as president uh, of the ISPRM. And these two years have been uh, very challenging, but also very interesting. I had the honor to be the president uh, in the year when the, um, uh, the first ever resolution on, uh, on uh, strengthening rehabilitation in the health systems has been approved by the WHO. And um, I think uh, that um, this is really a key event for, um, for rehabilitation and for us as, as physical rehabilitation medicine specialists. I think that uh, ISPRM is now in a very good situation. We have um, good established rules, a very good central office, uh, we have a very good way of working uh, within um, the President Cabinet uh, and the Executive Committee and the Assembly of Delegates. Uh, all the ISPRM committees, uh, task forces, especially interest group, are working uh, in, a, um, in a smoothly way and um, with, uh, with an open dialogue uh, with the President Cabinet. And uh, we we have the High Spiram Year Forum that uh, it's uh, uh, giving uh, High Spiram uh, leadership new challenges and also new idea to evolve uh, for the future challenges that uh, the world of rehabilitation uh, will put us through. Well, for me, the ISPRM is a global focal point able to promote the practice of rehabilitation medicine. The organisation can demonstrate the value of this holistic and often multidisciplinary branch of medical practice, emphasising its role in reducing disability and promoting an individual's participation after accident or illness. The ISPRM can promote this to governments organisations such as the World Health Organisation and other medical specialties and societies. Also, in some countries and in some cultures, rehabilitation medicine is more advanced than in others and the structure of ISPRM can support its ongoing develop, uh, and development in less advantaged regions. For me, however, the major focus giving meaning to ISPRM is in providing educational activities through its special interest groups and annual scientific meetings, such as the one we're having this year in Sydney. In these forums, uh, people all over the world have the opportunity of sharing research, promoting an evidence base for our practice and presenting innovative ideas in rehabilitation medicine practice, as well as providing opportunities for making new social contacts. The ISPRM has made great progress in the last 25 years and I wish the organisation a happy birthday and continuing success and development in the years to come. It is my honour to speak about Professor Heimring. 
Hamring was born on the July 18, 1944, and passed away on uh, September 15, in 2008. So he was very young, and he suffered of acute disease and uh, was too young to know. He was born in Uruguay. In 1963, he went to Israel. He lived in a kibbutz, and uh, then he, forced, he served the, the army. He became specialist of physical and rehabilitation medicine in the Lowenstein Rehab Hospital. And after he did a very, very uh, proud and a very huge career, academic career, he was professor at Tel Aviv University. He became president of ISPRM and was the president of the Second World Congress of ISPRM. He was the founder of uh, uh, the Mediterranean Forum. He organized the first Congress of the Mediterranean Forum of Physical and Rehabilitation Medicine in Antalya. And then he be became the first president of the Mediterranean Forum and later the first honorary board member of the Mediterranean Forum. Most important is that uh, Heimring was a very kind and gentle man with a very particular uh, personality. He was a very, very good friend, but not only of me, of all. I remember when I was with him in any Congress, everybody wanted to have a photo with him. And he always was very kind, accepting every time, even if he was too busy. His motto was rehabilitation without frontiers. And actually, he did a lot, not only for the Rehabilitation International, but also for medicine in general. So it was sad what happened, his uh, premature death. But there's no doubt that his memory, his spirit, and his work will survive and will live forever. Thank you, Professor Heimring. ISPRM has meant uh, different things to me at different phases. Uh, the first period would be from 1992 to 1999. Uh, during that period of time, the two uh, organizations that were merging to become the ISPRM uh, formed a uh, joint international committee to study whether it was feasible for them to merge together. And, and I was chairman of that committee. So that, that committee, the, the, the meaning of that committee, it was one of hope, uh, one of uh, confidence that we could move forward. Uh, we were dreaming that we would be able to form an organization that would be an effective international organization like some of the others that we had seen. We, we, uh, we had to do lots of negotiations so that it meant being uh, political and how one went about the activity. And it was uh, forming together the framework of a, uh, of a dream organization. The, the second period would be from 1999 when the ISPRM was founded until uh, the middle 2000s, during which time I was president and, then, and on the board afterwards. And, and this was a time of, um, of uh, focusing on st structuring or developing uh, the infrastructure of the organization. And, uh, and, and the feeling then was also one of uh, uh, well, sort of excitement and uh, feeling that uh, it, it was uh, an organization that was going to be able to move forward. And then the third is uh, after the 2000s uh, into the present time is one of pride for the organization because it has indeed evolved. Uh, into a significant international organization that is doing all of the functions that we had uh, projected and dreamed that it would, um, such as having annual congresses, 
being an effective uh, advocate for uh, rehabilitation medicine in WHO, the UN, and other uh, places, providing educational programs, um, providing standards for education, uh, providing uh, regular education or uh, and communication with members, uh, and, and being a place where uh, physiatrists, uh, PM PM, PRM doctors all over the world uh, could mingle and get together and know each other and work towards a common goal. Well, I, I would um, summarize it as um, exciting because we were forming a new organization. We had ideas about how to move it forward. We had ideas about what it wanted to be. And, and we were making progress as we moved forward. And it was progress that the other two organizations had been unable to do, even though they'd worked for many years to try to do it. So that uh, we were reforming the infrastructure, getting a uh, executive office, uh, having uh, congresses, and uh, identifying all of the rules by which the organization uh, would function in the future. Uh, it, it, it also was a busy time because we uh, had to not only have meetings uh, about organizing the organization and also the, the um, focus between in getting the, the documents that had to be prepared to provide the basis for the organization. Uh, so it was a very busy time. And it was even busier because the president uh, of the ISPRM uh, receives many invitations from individual countries to speak there and to uh, interact with the uh, groups of the um, membership uh, that exist in those countries. So for instance, uh, during the three years that I was president from 1999 to 2002, uh, I um, gave 26 lectures in 11 different countries, which uh, involved a lot of uh, travel and, and actually sometimes very long travel for very short stays. Um, I, I thought an interesting story might be that one of those uh, trips, or at least um, two, maybe two trips, uh, were to Kuwait. And, and during the time that uh, as president I was in Kuwait, um, I would uh, meet with the uh, Minister of uh, Health and, uh, and, and then pictures would be taken of that. Well, one of the people that was the guide for my wife had a picture of me with the Minister of Health and mailed it to her at her college. But he actually um, didn't realize that she uses her own last name rather than mine. So the letter got to the college, but they didn't know what to do with it. And so they kind of kept it around. But then when 9-11 occurred in the US, um, the college saw that it had come from an Arab country. And, and so they opened it. And then they saw a picture of me with, with the, the Minister of Health, who of course was an Arab gentleman. And uh, at that time the United, in the United States, everybody was very worried about uh, further terrorist activity. And so uh, they actually notified the um, FBI about it. Now it became no problem, of course, because as soon as the FBI just called my wife, she outlined what it was and it was no problem. But it wasn't kind of an interesting experience. This is a time to honor our ISPRM, the valuable initiative led by Professor John Melvin and supported by Martin Grabois and Satoshi Ueda, had the power to change the history of physical medicine and rehabilitation. The feeling of pride and commitment created at that moment during the Washington Congress, took over all physiatrists around the world. And now we are the most important international society in our field. This is great. The, inter the International Congress, the third of ISPRM, took place here in Sao Paulo and brought together the main government authorities and mainly from the health area. International authorities from health area. 
The importance of this specialty in the health system was consolidated here in Brazil, but in many parts of the world. And the government committed to extending and strengthening rehabilitation in the health chain was assured. And now in WHO, we have a special place, a special document registered about how important is our work. Many medical students who attended the Congress and understood that this was the specialty of the future, today are members of our international society. We celebrate the honorable presence of the biggest names, biggest names in physical medicine and rehabilitation. And between science and entertainment, in the third Congress of ISPRM, uh, we strengthen international scientific cooperation. We dance, we did science, we make uh, 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 presentations about uh, our invited speakers' uh, presentation, art presentation. Uh, from our international speakers and the, all situations, I can assure that uh, became our specialty more strong within Brazil and South America. If you, I can understand that uh, we need to, uh, in the same journey, is very important, inspiring young doctors and students. Always remember with gratitude those who come before us. We need to understand the future, remember, remember the past. We need a good time to discuss the future, but we never to forget the past. We have a fantastic history that is very important to honor our international society of physical and rehabilitation medicine. Happy birthday! Happy birthday for for you, international society, for us, physiatrists who work in this incredible specialty. Hello, colleague. I am Chang Il Park from Korea. I was the first president of ISPRN. First and foremost, congratulations, ISPRN. I am grateful to be able to further develop PMR in Asia, including Korea, and furthermore, the world through ISPRN. Additionally, I had the chance to meet many distinguished scholars at ISPRM and collaborating with them in the development of ISPRM was both enjoyable and beneficial. During my term as a president, I had the privilege of hosting the first Seoul World Congress of ISPRM. My goal was to establish a high-level academic conference and showcase Korean culture on an international stage. The event blossomed into a significant academic gathering and the humble Korea's traditional fashion show received universal acclaim for its beauty. It was my honor to successfully host the Fourth World Congress of ISPRM and to disseminate Korean culture globally. Once again, congratulations, uh, ISPRM. I extend my gratitude to the president of ISPRM, 
Professor Francesca Gimigliano and all the past presidents, executives, and members who have contributed to ISPRM's growth over the last 25 years. I wish ISPRM continued success in its mission. Thank you. 1988, I published this book, or I had it published. I was the editor. It is the, uh, the textbooks in the United States in physical medicine rehabilitation were, in my opinion, very poor. So I worked with a whole bunch of people to put this book together. It's 900 pages. It's uh, uh, four, 44 chapters. It's about 120 authors. When it got published by Lippincott, all of a sudden it was used worldwide. And all of a sudden I got invited to a lot of places to talk about physical medicine and rehabilitation. And this talk about the textbooks. Um, I, this gave me a chance to really get involved with ISPRM and the societies all over the country. And to really look at the ideas that they have with respect to patient care, education, and research. I'm going to tell you two stories that are very interesting. Both of them occurred in the Philippines. The Philippines actually did not weigh the publication laws. They published the book themselves in the Philippines. And people would come up and ask me to sign it, and I did. I was, I was not interested in the money. I was interested in people having the knowledge. All of a sudden, this young man comes up to me. This 900-book textbook, he had photocopy. So he asked me to sign the photocopy, which I did. I thought it was really quite amazing. He then looks at me and says, you know, authors are supposed to be very old or dead. You're not either one of those. And so I started laughing. I thought that was amazing that he would say that. Also in the Philippines, they were having a lot of problems at that time, and their president was a military person. I was on the main stage with him talking about healthcare in the Philippines. And the Philippines had a lot of problems at that time, and he had and a lot of blackouts. And he had said there would never be a blackout where I go. Well, it's interesting what happened. I was up on the stage and I blacked out. And I thought, oh my goodness, this might be an assassination. I was sitting next to him. I didn't want to move because I thought that might be a bad idea too. So I sat there for what seemed to be forever. When the lights came back on, we were both alive. And he was so mad, you couldn't believe it. So those are some interesting things that happened with the textbook. So the textbook really got me involved with ISPRM. I met so many really interesting people. These people had, were in some respects way ahead of us in the United States in what they were doing. So I decided I needed to really get involved a lot with ISPRM. That, I was asked to talk about uh, how was your time as president? Well, I'll say two things, very busy and with a lot of change. I was the fifth president of ISPRM from 2008 to 2010. A big change occurred, well, let's put it this way. In 2004, I was the vice president. 2006, I was the president-elect. And that Congress was in South Korea, and it was just an amazing Congress, probably the best we'd had up to then. When I became president in 2008, ISPRM changed so that the president was in charge of the society, but they had a different president in charge of the Congress. I would have never been able to do both of them same time. I worked very closely with my vice president, Gerald Stuckey, and we put together two task force. One was on organizational changes, and we had John Melvin ahead of that. And John Melvin uh, made an num enormous number of changes that were approved by the board with respect to the bylaws, the policies, and the procedures of ISPR. John still continues this day ahead of bylaws. Uh, the second one was looking at the central office and the issues associated with the central office. Uh, that was chaired by Christ Christopher Gutenbrenner. Central office, uh, this was a voluntary society. We had very little money. We had one individual, and he had a, a lot of things to do, essentially with very little money. But 
we needed to figure out how to build up central office, what we wanted to do with central office, and especially it became acute when one of the major societies said they were going to leave ISPRM because they had to have an audit and we would not provide them with an audit. So we also did a few other things occurred during that, major things occurred during that time I was president. We decided to go from having our Congress every two years to to have an annual Congress, and that worked out pretty well. I suggested, and it has been happening since then, that we have a worldwide disability day. And also, at the same time, what happened was we had a huge earthquake in China. I believe this is around 2010. And ISPRM established a disability relief committee that is has been very, very prominent and growing to this day is because we have so many natural disasters. As far as happy birthday, ISPRM, I wish you the, the best for the present and in the future. I, uh, I'm amazed, being a voluntary organization, how productive, energetic, and effective ISPRM has been over these past 25 years. I especially liked the core curriculum and competencies for the professional practice of PM&R that's been that is associated and present in all the world. I do wonder, and would we could do, could you do the same thing with respect to certification? I realize that's very political, but it would be nice if a podiatrist could practice anywhere in this world, especially when needs come up, etc. I would like to see ISPR also reestablish the historical position. It used to be that we had, and it hasn't been done since 2014. That, but it gives a very different view than minutes of the society over a period of time. I also think that ISPRM really needs to look at carefully how to increase the fiscal stability of the organization. Our, our money really comes from our annual meetings, Congresses. On the other hand, as we continue to grow and have more needs, we're going to need much more in the way of staff. So I think it's really ISPRM to look at other options. Would one of those options be our journal to the point where it can have so be very self-sustaining and bring in lots of money. There's lots of other things that we might want to think of that ISPRM can do. I think that's something that they need to think about for the future. With all of that, uh, ISPRM has been a great pleasure for me. I've worked long and hard with associated with it. I've been retired now for 12 years. I'm wearing a necktie probably for the <laughs> 12th time in 12 years. Uh, and I really enjoy life. But I, I really think of the things that I've done and what I continue to do, ISPR is very, very high on the list. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak. Good night. I have been president of the International Society of Physical and Rehabilitation Medicine, our umbrella organization for PRM physicians worldwide. At the beginning of the second decade, that means 2010 to 2012. The first challenge was actually to register our society as an NGO in Geneva at the Chambre du Commerce. So since 2010, we are a fully registered NGO at the city of the United Nations in Geneva. The second challenge, together with all my colleagues, colleagues from the President's Cabinet, was to guide ISPRM in the second decade. And that meant, among many things, but most importantly, to strengthen the collaboration with WHO towards what you now all have realized, towards a resolution on strengthening rehabilitation in health systems. And that has happened in 2023. Now, ISPRM is in a unique position to take the momentum created by this resolution and to contribute to strengthening rehabilitation by strengthening physical and rehabilitation medicine. The true challenges now are that we achieve three goals. First of all, we need to strengthen academic capacity in PRM. That means 
There should be no faculty in the world by 2030 that has no full professor of BNM that is leading and chairing the Department of Physical and Rehabilitation Medicine. Secondly, we must make sure that functioning, the third health indicator, complementing morbidity and mortality, is being integrated in whole health information systems worldwide. And number three, we must make sure that every clinician, every rehabilitation professional, will be able to use a tool developed by ISPRM, which is CLINFIT, the Clinical Functioning Information Tool based on the ICF. So I wish us all, physicians, PRM physicians, rehab professionals in the world, to contribute now to strengthen rehab in all health systems and to make a contribution to people's well-being. Thank you. The International Society of Physical Rehabilitation Medicine is the strongest, the highest, the most powerful voice of physical and rehabilitation medicine at the global level, essential and capable of responding to the world's health challenges throughout the years. As the ISPRM president back in 2013-2014, during the ISPRM challenging teenager times, our main goal was to gather as many members from the different geographical areas to actively contribute to raise our voice in every corner of planet Earth. We also worked very hard to establish the more than deserved awareness of the relevant and key role of physical and rehabilitation medicine in all areas of medicine. For all of that is the ISPRM. Today, the ISPRM bears the fruits of a long and everlasting devoted work of many. Many who shares a common vision. Everyone who needs rehabilitation receives quality services to optimize and maintain their functioning in everyday life. At ISPRM's 25th anniversary, challenges have definitely changed. With a very well-established and recognized role in health of the 21st century, my birthday wish is that every university and medical school on planet Earth offers, as we do at the University of Sao Paulo the School of Medicine in Sao Paulo, Brazil, mandatory and quality physical and rehabilitation medicine teaching for all its medical students so that there are enough PRM doctors to provide quality rehabilitation and to respond to the extreme lack of certified and qualified physical and rehabilitation doctors and for that professors of PRM are in need. Also, with wisdom and strong will, I sincerely wish that ISPRM innovates and shines brighter to provide proper functioning for the human being. ISPRM, happy 21st, 5th birthday! Okay, ISPRM is a flag to me because this is a symbol for my international involvement uh, in my career. ISPM is also a very important platform for, the, for my friends and the colleagues internationally to join together and working for our physical and uh, rehabilitation medicine. And uh, ISPM is also a platform for international exchange, which is uh, critical to facilitate the progress and the development of our specialty in the world. So SPM is really a very critical. It is a flag, it is a home to me. Every day, every day during my presidency, I was why to remember. And uh, every day is meaningful to me 
I cannot describe just one event or one conference to make uh, the most impression to me, but uh, every day is, is important. During my presidency, I think of several things I, I did for this society, which uh, would be very important in the history. Uh, number one is I initiate a regular PC, uh, PC meeting online. I think this is a way to facilitate uh, the communication for the leadership of ICPM. And secondly, I initiate a mechanism which is called the ICPM Summit for Developing Countries, which is also uh, in the future, especially in the future, is a potential mechanism to facilitate uh, our specialty uh, in the developing countries. And in addition, I think I did a lot of work to promote ISPM concept and the practice in China and in Asia Oceania region. I'm currently the president of Asia Oceania Physical and the Rehabilitation Medicine Society. So this is really a start from my career in ISPM and continue to uh, Asia and Oceania region continuously, so which make, will make a certainly uh, important contribution for our special specialty in the future. First, I would say I'm appassionate by by ISPRM. Uh, ISPRM, there's no doubt, means the leading association in rehabilitation medicine that is gathering and joining all the PM, PRM physicians and other that are connected with rehabilitation. Second, ISPRM is doing a fantastic job in many fields, putting people together, but also doing and influencing the entire world about rehabilitation medicine, about those with uh, health conditions that uh, change their functionality. The task and the job that is being doing by SPRM, namely in WHO, is uh, the best of our achievements, which the current result and the most updated result was the WHO resolution uh, about rehabilitation that was approved during the Health World Assembly. But that's only part of what ISPRM will achieve. During my presidency, I would say the most important achievement was to have a very successful Congress during Paris in 2018. And the other major achievement was the launching of our journal, the Journal of the International Society of Physical and Rehabilitation Medicine. Finally, it was to continue the work done by uh, Chen and Li. We had uh, several issues because uh, there was really some conflicts with, uh, by that time, the Association Management Company and the Congress Company, which was Ken's, and we also solved that issue. In summary, I do believe that after my presidency, ISPRM was stronger and uh, with more participants, more people belonging and trying to join ISPRM. It is uh, a very special moment to say happy 25th anniversary ISPRM. I'm sure we'll have much more years with this society that will become stronger and stronger. Congratulations, ISPRM, continue this way. So the International Society of Physical and Rehabilitation Medicine, in, in my opinion, is a very important professional organization. Um, ISPRM brings together uh, people with the same interests, uh, the same commitment, 
um, the same background, of course, uh, training and education in a very special medical specialty, that is physical and rehabilitation medicine, but also interested in something that is perhaps broader than the, than the medical specialty, which is rehabilitation uh, in and of itself. Um, what is interesting to me is that people that come together in ISPRM have the same interest in using rehabilitation to make the life of people with disabilities, of persons with disabilities, much better. Um, they also come together because they are committed to the education and training of the future generation of specialists. Um, another thing they have in common is that they have a special interest in the generation of new knowledge uh, through scientific research to strengthen the knowledge base of the specialty. A very, very important activity. And finally, they also have a special interest in working together with other rehabilitation professionals that may have different background but the same objectives and goals. So this is an organization that is about coming together. It is about the future. It's about enhancing quality of life. It's about education. It is about research, advancing academic, <clears throat> building academic capacity. And because of all of those objectives and goals, I think this is a very special entity. I am quite certain <clears throat> that this is true for many uh, if not all of our colleagues. The other important element that we shouldn't um, forget is that ISPRM um, is a global entity. So we have members from all over the world. Um, many, many national societies have joined uh, ISPRM and they come together, for example, in the World Congress to share uh, information about what they do in their countries, uh, talk about their problems and potential solutions. So this idea that we can, <clears throat> in, a, in an event like the World Congress, um, bring people together from different parts of the world that may have different cultures and languages and other things, um, it, it's also very, very um, special. So I would say <clears throat> that this is the kind of organization that the world is in need of. And I hope that we can continue to develop ISPRM, continue to contribute to ISPRM and strengthen um, the organization uh, for, for the future uh, challenges. I had the privilege of uh, being elected president of the International Society of Physical and Rehabilitation Medicine. Um, in 2018 and was president until uh, 2020. This is the, the usual two-year term uh, for presidents of the society. Uh, it was a complete privilege and honor to be president of ISPRM. Um, I hope that the work we did at the time uh, was uh, important for the society um, that we, uh, together with the other members of the President's Cabinet, try to strengthen the society and reach out to colleagues all over the world uh, to come together and to promote uh, the objectives and goals of the society. Um, one of the things that, <clears throat> that I was very happy about is that we were able to increase the number of countries and the number of members that joined the society during that time. At the same time, we were able to organize uh, three successful World Congresses in 2018. Uh, we um, did the Congress in Paris that was organized by the previous uh, president, of course, but that was the, the time when, the, or the occasion, 
of uh, my um, beginning of president, uh, as president. In 2019, we went to Kobe, uh, Japan, and in 2020, to Orlando, uh, Florida, in the United States. And my um, most important memory of those congresses, again, is the number of people that came from different countries to participate in the Congress, <clears throat> to present their research, to listen to guest uh, keynote speakers and experts, and to socialize with each other, get to get to know people that had the same objectives and goals. I would highlight <clears throat> two events that I would say were quite um, impressive to me. Um, in 2019 in Kobe, uh, Japan, we were able to bring together all of the past presidents of ISPR. All of them came together uh, in Kobe, in Japan, and I, I thought that was quite special because it really means that even though <clears throat> some of them had been president years ago, they were still very, very supportive of the mission, the vision and mission of the of the society. Uh, the only one that um, couldn't join us was uh, Professor Haim Ring, who is no longer with us, <clears throat> but we were very happy to remember him at the ceremony. So, so that gathering of all past presidents was, was uh, quite special. And in my opinion, a very, very strong message to everybody in the world that is interested in physical and rehabilitation medicine. The second event that <clears throat> was quite special uh, to me was the 2020 World Congress in Orlando. And the reason for that is that at the time of the Congress, um, we were, um, I would say, in the beginning stages of the pandemic. And it was really special to see how many people from all over the world attended the Congress <clears throat> and decided that it was important to be there. Um, evidently, after that, um, uh, there was a, a, an important declaration by the WHO about the pandemic. but. The point is that the Congress was extremely <clears throat> successful and uh, it was great to see many of our colleagues uh, again participating in the Congress. So those two events were, were quite special. Of course, there were many other <clears throat> occasions when in interactions and meetings with members of ISBRM, working with the President's Cabinet, the Executive Committee, the Assembly of Delegates, all of those things were quite special. And uh, I think um, anybody that is interested in, in our uh, medical specialty um, would enjoy tremendously uh, their participation in, in this society. So I, I think uh, my main message as past president is join ISBRM, support our vision and mission, work with us uh, for the uh, benefit of our patients, our students, and our academic uh, colleagues. Happy 25th anniversary of ISPRM. As being the International Society for Specialists in Physical and Reputation Medicine, ISPRM has progressed steadily in the last 25 years in all aspects, including education and training for PRN specialists. I wish in the coming another 25 years, more and more countries will establish their national societies of physical and reputation medicine. And people with functional limitation will be benefited from the knowledge and skills of PRN specialists. Goodbye and happy 25th anniversary of ISPRN again. Well, being active in ISPRM from the very beginning, ISPRM is actually an important part of my life, if not the most important. When I started my PRM training in 1986, so more than 35 years ago, it was my dream of building a strong, scientifically, scientifically proven and well-founded and respected specialty for the benefit of all people with disabilities. And today, I'm so happy that I could contribute a little bit 
to the real realization of this great ISPRM society. As one of the founding members of this society, I still remember that we were starting negotiations in 1996 between IRMA and the International Federation, just right after the World Congress of uh, the International Federation in Sydney, Australia in 1995. I was serving at that time as Vice Secretary General of IRMA in its board. And in 1999, we signed then the agreement in Washington DC at our first ISPRM Congress with John Melvin as first president. In 2000, at the ISPRM board meeting during the Mediterranean PRM Congress in Athens, Greece, we had to decide about the central secretarial office. And as treasurer in the first president's cabinet, I remember that we had three candidates. But at that time, we didn't have much money. So we couldn't afford to pay uh, the two uh, candidate organizations from the United States. And, though I, and so I said, it would be better to have a small and less experienced organization than none at all. So we chose for the Belgian Medi Congress organization that served as central office for about 12 years. After them, we had Kenis from Switzerland and finally, until now, AIM in uh, Italy. I would like to congratulate ISPRM with its 25th birthday. I look forward to a bright future for ISPRM, continuing the work that we've done and the work ahead of us to, to create improvement for the more than a billion people in the world experiencing disabilities, where ISPRM will grow and become one of the most important medical specialties. Congratulations once more with your 25th birthday and see you all at the next World Congress in Sydney. Good day, everyone. It was in 1999 that the International Society of Physical and Rehabilitation Medicine, ISPRM, was born. And this is a result of the merger of the International Federation of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation and the International Rehabilitation Medicine Association. So, this year, in 2024, we will be celebrating our 25th anniversary. Our silver anniversary still embodying the same mission and goal to optimize functioning, minimize disability, and improve health-related quality of life in persons with disabilities and medical problems throughout the world. Our anniversary is not only about sharing 25 years of accomplishments. It's also about recognizing the tremendous growth that has occurred within our organization and the dedication of that has taken to get there. 25 years is truly a milestone. It is nothing short of patience, passion, and tenacity that has carried ISPRM this far. And it's those same values that will keep us pushing through to many more years to come. So happy, happy silver anniversary. And as we say it in the Philippine language, mabuhay po ang ISPRM. Um, ISPRM has uh, been a very important uh, peer organization uh, for me. People very committed to their work with a great contribution to health systems around the world and to the patients. It allowed me to share knowledge and experiences with very good people from all over the world. For our country, it has been a permanent contribution to improve our health systems. Happy birthday, ISPRA, and I wish that we continue to build wellness for people with rehabilitation needs in the world and for us. And I wish 
that I aspirem continue to build wellness for people with rehabilitation needs in the world and for us. Happy birthday, ISPRM, and uh, for all the members of this organization. The ISPRM represents about 30,000 physical and rehabilitation medicine specialists from around the world, serving as a catalyst for education, research, innovation, and advocacy. The ISPRM represents the field of PRM by working closely with other international health organizations with a goal to contribute to achieving optimal functioning and quality of life for people experiencing disabilities. The start of my presidency helps usher in the celebration of the 25th anniversary of ISPRM, when we should reflect on the society's many accomplishments in the last quarter century. At the same time, we should reflect on how else we can fortify and implement our action plans for the next 25 years to keep ISPRM as strong as it has always been in representing the voice of physical and rehabilitation medicine specialists around the world. When physiatrists from all over Come together and start to build up We can do something for you Raise your eyes, improve your function Put your life in the hands of the ones Who can really help you Take the first step and don't delay Medicine. And the future starts today